I'm Alex Berman, and you're watching Selling Breakdowns. There's a big movie coming out on Christmas Day, a musical starring Hugh Jackman called The Greatest Showman. It's about the life of P.T. Barnum, one of the powerhouses of the entertainment business before movies came along. Today we're going to take a look at this fascinating character and see what about him is just myth and try to get a fair representation of him as a person. Let's start with a myth. One of the more famous is a quote attributed to P.T. Barnum. There's a sucker born every minute. He never said it, but the quote stuck because this is one of the impressions people have of him. That he was basically a con man out to squeeze whatever money he could from the general public. And if you have no idea who this man is, I think you'll find his life pretty interesting. Phineas Taylor Barnum was born in Connecticut in 1810. The business spirit burnt strong in him and by 12 years old he was selling lottery tickets, inspired by his grandfather Phineas Taylor. His father died when he was just 15, so as a young man he moved to New York hoping to make his fortune and to support his mother and five siblings. He had a natural flair for salesmanship and wasn't afraid of some wild exaggeration. He bought a slave named Joyce Heath for $1,000 and made that amount back every single week by charging the public to meet her and telling everyone she'd been George Washington's nanny and was over 160 years old. And although profiting from slavery is clearly a terrible part of his biography, Barnum did recognize the need for change and left the Democratic Party in 1854 to join the newly formed anti-slavery Republicans. However, his appetite for the weird and wonderful only grew, leading him to buy and renovate a museum in Lower Manhattan, which he reopened in 1842 as Barnum's American Museum. He added to the existing stuffed animals and strange artifacts by bringing live acts, like a 25-inch tall Charles Sherwood Stratton, and some famous fakes like the Fiji Mermaid, which was actually just a young monkey corpse sewn to a fish. If this sounds like just a pure con, Barnum saw it differently. The mermaid, for example, was just to get people through the door, but the museum, as well as the acts and curiosities that he toured with, did bring people real excitement and entertainment. He felt that if you gave people real value, it didn't matter that you'd got them through the door on false pretenses. And there's no doubt that people loved what was on offer. The museum became a landmark and his tours with acts like Swedish opera singer Jenny Lind made him half a million dollars. The name of the Hugh Jackman movie, The Greatest Showman, is mostly taken from Barnum's later work running a huge circus with his partner James Bailey, which he named The Greatest Show on Earth. It's what he's most famous for, but he didn't actually start the show until after he was 60 years old. Once a showman, always a showman, I guess. Although some of the reason was that the museum burnt down in 1868, so he needed another gig. Barnum and Bailey's circus lasted all the way until May 2017. Throughout his life, he reissued an updated autobiography, The Life of P.T. Barnum, written by himself. It was first published in 1854, but he added to it as the years went by, and even put it in the public domain so anyone could print it. Eventually, it was the most widely printed book in North America after the New Testament. It's impossible to pin Barnum down as either an egotistical salesman or a great entertainer who wanted to inspire imaginations, because the truth is he was a little of both. He spent time as a politician, not just to improve his adopted hometown of Bridgeport, Connecticut, but also campaigning to ban alcohol and abolish the death penalty. And a lot of his work raises an interesting question. Do the ends justify the means when it comes to promotion? If your customers are happy with what they get, does it matter that it's not exactly what you offered? Customers are much more savvy today and honesty is far more effective than anything else. When everyone can check information in an instant, you're going to get found out fast if you can't meet your own claims. We also live in an age where businesses need to build trust with their customers, not just to keep them, but to grow. You'll notice the change in copywriting today. Simplicity is king. We've gone through the years of big hyperbolic taglines and then we got buried in euphemisms and buzzwords. But I feel like more businesses are realizing that customers just want straight talk. That's what we aim to give you on this channel, the greatest channel on earth. Want to learn more about business theory and history? Be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of our next segment.